Claudia here. Welcome back to another week of Kids Church at Home. It's great to see you all. I hope you've had a really fun start to half term. We've got a fun time lined up together today. We're going to um, sing some songs and worship God together. And then you may have heard that our light party is coming up next weekend. So to get us in the mood for that, Ben and Callum are going to do some teaching for us today all on the theme of light. So I've got my glow sticks at the ready just in case I need them. I can't wait to get started so I'll hand over to the kids worship team now. Good morning Grace Church kids. I'm Maddie. I'm going to be leading us in some songs to our God this morning. Um, before we start I'm just going to read a bit from the Bible um, and it says just one little verse is from Psalm 18. It says, he, the Lord, brought me out into a spacious place. He rescued me because he delighted in me. Wow. I wonder if you can imagine the most spacious place you've ever been in or ever thought about. Maybe for you, you enjoy learning about outer space and that's the biggest space, you know, the, the whole universe is the biggest space you can think of. Maybe you really like football and the biggest space you've been in is the football pitch. Maybe it's the playground at school. Maybe you've just enjoyed looking up at the sky and thinking, wow, it's so big. Whatever it is, picture it in your mind right now. And uh, that, that big space, the space that Jesus has brought us into spiritually, so in our hearts, is even bigger than that. The freedom that you feel when you're running around the football pitch or running around with your friends or, um, or gazing up at the sky is nothing compared to the freedom that Jesus has brought us into. So I'm going to quickly pray and then we're going to celebrate that freedom today. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you love us, that your word says you delight in us and you delighted in us so much that you came down to earth to rescue us through the cross and we worship you for that today. Amen. <laughs>
softly and I just encourage you where you are to just thank Jesus for um, bringing you out into a spacious place. He saved us all together as family but he also saved us as the individual people that we are and so we can thank him ourselves in our own words personally. So I'm just going to leave just one or two minutes for you to do that and then we'll sing one more song. off with a song that lots of you will know. Uh, it, also, it does have some actions, so I can't do the actions because I'm playing this old thing, but if you can, if you know the actions, then I hope you're doing them. Let's go. that there is no one like you. Thank you that you uh, saw us in our sin and our mess and you chose to come down and rescue us yourself because you knew that there would be no other way that we could be saved. And we're so grateful, Lord, for your um, generous kindness of giving yourself so freely so that we can walk in freedom today. And I pray for these guys as they um, learn from your word in this next session, Lord, would you bless them? Would you speak to them? Would you be near to them, oh God? In Jesus' name, amen. 
Hello, my name's Ben. Hi, my name's Callum. And today we're going to be doing our 5 to 11s teaching, which is not going to be too heavy this morning because it's all about light. So we're going to keep it nice and light ahead of next week's light party. And I've heard rumours of a chocolate fountain. How are you going to do that online? I don't know, but if the rumours are true. Fountain. Yeah. Like all in your mouth. Get it everywhere. Oh, great. <laughs> what, else, what else have you heard that it's going to be? Lights. Good. And no dark things. No dark things, yeah. It's definitely a light party. We're not going to do all that Halloween stuff. Because um, light's better than darkness, as, um, as I'm sure you'll get to know over this 10 minutes we're going to do. So, we had a question for you, which Ben is going to tell you. Yes, indeed. The question is very simple. Why is light important? Now, this might sound like a stupid question to begin with because I imagine you will take light for granted all the time. The sun comes up in the morning um, and it's there and we have electricity in our houses, so you turn, switch the light switch and light turns on, you see what you're doing in the morning so you don't knock everything over and stuff like that. But there are many reasons why light is important. Um, the first one being, it just, it gives us life, surprisingly. Um, the sun comes up and it means that means that the plants grow and so the plants can grow and then some animals can eat those plants and we can eat those plants or we can um, eat those animals and um, obviously being kind to them, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, but, you know, so we can, eat, can we eat food so we can survive, so we can live, um, so we can go, go to nice restaurants, um, socially distance, of course. What else can light do? Um, try a bit. On that food theme, when you put your food in the microwave, the light comes on and you can see it spinning around. Um, if you're a fan of microwaves, that's, that's another thing you can do. Um, I like to go camping and when I get my torch out, I can see not to trip over the ropes, but I normally trip anyway, so sometimes it doesn't quite work. I think I need a better torch actually, so um, yeah, that's another thing. Yeah. In this world of technology, um, screens run our lives and if you haven't noticed, Screens are made out of light, so I can watch the TV, I can play on my phone, we can uh, make this video, um, stuff like that. You can play games on, your, play games on your phone, on your Xbox, on your PlayStation, that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, we have lots of fun, um, and adults do boring things like send emails and do work on their laptops. Um, so you can do that with light as well. Yeah. And if you haven't guessed, Today's teaching is all about light. light. There we go. Um, so we're going to jump into the Bible. Um, we're going to look at um, a, just one verse, I think, um, in what in John chapter eight. So that's um, a biography about Jesus' life, written by surprisingly John. And my Bible. Um, this is Jesus speaking, and just I've got a prop for you, just here for you. Okay. This is our inflatable Jesus. As you can see, he's he's quite white, so it's not historically accurate, but that's okay because I mean he I blew him up just now. So um yes, see this is our blow up Jesus. I won't put him now, put him right here. Anyway, so Jesus is speaking. Um so you can imagine him now. And he says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness but will have the light of life. That's what he said. And um, if you're like me, you, when you first read that, had absolutely no idea what he was talking about. Like, the light of the world, like, that sounds like the sun to me, kind of. Um, and you will never walk in darkness, but would have the light of life, whatever the, the light of life means. Um, so I thought I'd dig a little bit deeper and see if we can work out um, what's going on here. So Cam, do you want to explain what's like the context, what's going on at, at the time when he says this random statement, it seems? Uh, yes, so Jesus has been saying lots of things and the people have been getting very confused, which they always do, and so do I actually, when he says lots of things. And um, just after this, he's been, he's been talking to some of like, the religious leaders of the day who don't quite get him. So he says to them, I'm the light of the world, and um, if you follow me, you'll not walk in darkness. But they think, well, what, what does this mean? 
And then just after this, we had this um, really funny story of uh, a man who was born blind and um, Jesus' disciples say to him, like, oh, is it his fault or is it his parents that he was born blind? And he's like, no, no, it's not his fault. He's just, he's just blind. Um, so Jesus anoints this man's eyes with mud and then makes him wash it off and then he goes back to Jesus and he can see. That's so, the fun bit, by the way. That's the fun bit. Yeah, not, don't, not him being blind. Don't put mud in your eyes. No. Um, we wouldn't recommend. Um, but then the religious leaders come to Jesus and with this man. And, well, they say to the man, like, who did this? And he's like, I don't know. And then Jesus comes along. He's like, oh, he's the guy. And then they say to Jesus, did you do this to him? And there's all a bit of conflict. His parents get involved and his parents are like, no, don't get us involved. And it's all a bit funny. Um, but the reason this story comes just after Jesus says that he's the light of the world is because there's a deeper meaning to it, which is... Which is, so when Jesus says, I'm the light of the world, he is talking about himself and he, he's explaining that he is the son of God. But some people, as we've already seen, some people don't believe it. The religious leaders, the Pharisees say that they, they don't believe it. And this guy's parents are like, oh, I'm not so sure. Don't want to get in, the, don't, don't want to wade in too far. Don't want to get involved. Um, but the guy, maybe unsurprisingly, who's been healed is like, yeah. I get it, Jesus, yeah, he healed me, he like, he, he must be the son of God, and he believes that he is the son of God. But like, what has got to do with light? Well, light has many things, as we've already talked about, but what it does, it means that we can see what we're doing, we can see what we're going, but it also reveals stuff to us. Stuff that we couldn't see before, it means that we can see what it is. So what Jesus has done, he's not only opened the eyes of this blind man so he can see light physically, but he's also opened his, the, eyes of his, uh, the eyes of his heart, his spiritual eyes, so he can see that Jesus is the Son of God. He can see that um, Jesus um, was the Messiah, the Saviour, um, who's also our Saviour, who came to save us. But the, the Pharisees, they, uh, they can't see, they, would you say, you know, they were like spiritually blind. They can see the light physically, but they can't see that Jesus is the Son of God. They haven't had the light shone um, in their hearts. So they don't believe. In fact, they actively go against um, what Jesus is saying, what uh, the man has come to believe that has uh, been made to see. They, they don't get it. But luckily, we have seen, the man has seen, we have seen, um, if you are a Christian, you have seen that Jesus is the Son of God. He is um, our Saviour. And that's just really cool. We think that's, that's really something that and means a lot to us. And we're so grateful and, um, and blessed that that's true. Yeah, the Bible talks about this miracle that God does in us when we become Christians. He says that once we were blind in our hearts but God the same one who said let there be light at the very beginning said let there be light to our hearts that we might see Jesus with our faces completely unveiled so that we can see who he is with nothing in the way um, but it also says that um, the people love the darkness and um, you may be coming up to this uh, Halloween light party weekend and thinking well I, I see my friends at school and, and, and they love all the dark things they they dress up in all these horrible things and um, normally go out but they can't and um, so no chocolate for anyone this year and um, except at the light party with the hey. chocolate fountain yeah. over zoom somehow um, but you might think well what does the light bring into this situation and in the, the start of John's gospel he says that the light shines in the darkness and the darkness does not overcome it you know, every time you turn on the light, the darkness doesn't then just be like, no, I'm going to come back. The light always wins. It uncovers and reveals the dark things and they run away and they flee. So the encouragement is this Halloween, this light party, that if you're a Christian, if you know the light of the world in you, that the light shines in the darkness and the darkness does not overcome it. So you can have hope, you can have courage that... Jesus is with you, in you, and that you have nothing to be afraid of. Yeah, so when Jesus says he is the light of life, that's what he means. 
turns out that we can understand things sometimes if we look into it. Um, so there you are, we're done, that's, that's our teaching done. I um, hope you enjoyed it. Um, we'd love to see you at the light party on Friday, because um, it's obviously better than Halloween and any darkness, because the light is better. Plus there'll be sweets and a chocolate fountain, stuff like that. Um, so yeah, um, thanks very much. Great, behave yourselves, eat your vegetables. Bye. Bye. Thanks so much for that, Ben and Callum. I didn't need these, but I did learn a lot about light today. And I also learned a lot about God. So a great time all around. Thank you guys. Right, our Sunday challenge this week is to make an autumn treat. Now you can find some more ideas and inspiration about how to do this in our kids' resources. Um, but you could do a picture that represents an autumn treat or maybe a collage, or you could even have a go at cooking or baking something. I'm thinking pumpkin soup. I'm thinking pumpkin pie. I'm thinking something without pumpkins. Oh, roasted vegetables, or maybe even an autumn cake. I'm not sure what that would look like, but I would love to find out. So if you do have a go at it, um, do send us in your pictures, get your grown-ups to email them to us at kids at gracechurchnottingham.org um, or they could send us a message on Facebook. We would love to see them. I will see some of you at our light party next week. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, I hope you all enjoy the rest of half term and I'll see you soon. Bye.